when we're talking about, uh, when we're talking about what's going on uh, in, in the economy today, about how people are making money. So let's go to this article. I spent five years interviewing 233 millionaires. Here's a number one career move that made them rich. Was it investing in the right company? Was uh, getting hired for the right job? Number one, they recognize they're being underutilized. Mm. Millionaires in my study often felt like they're always doing zombie work. Same in, day in, day out. So you ever uh, say hi to someone? What's going on, bro? How you doing? Another day, another dollar. Same old, same old. Same old, same old. That's how you know you're being underutilized. And if one day you want to become a first generation ca cash flow millionaire, have the social awareness to recognize this. All right, let's go to the second one. The second one, they had toxic bosses. Managers who are self, selfish, arrogant, demanding, or have little interest in your opinions won't help you reach your earning potential. One millionaire said he was so fed with his manager who could only criticize his work instead of giving constructive feedback. Oh, by the way, I hate that, man. Talk to me not just about what I don't do wrong. Talk to me about the things that I do right. Otherwise, you're toxic, man. Is like literally how you see the world is everything I'm doing wrong. Mm -hmm. By the way, side note, personal story. That's why for a minute, I had to stop talking to my dad. When I first started my business, my dad was being very toxic to me. You're a single dad, go get a job. You need, you need to provide for your kids. You need benefits. You need health insurance. Stop with this insurance thing. Stop with this, this business thing. You need to make real money. Mm. And then I come home one time. There's a manila folder. Hey, here's a job application for CPD. Here's a job application for FBI. Here's a job application for Secret Service. You still have a security clearance for the military. You need to use it before it expires, right? Before anything bad happens on your record. Said, Dad, would you lay off me? I said, why? Because I'm going to make a thing of this business. <laughs> he goes, huh. I said, Dad, what would it take for me to get you off my back? He goes, I don't know. You just need to get a job, make some real money, because you have people that depend on you. I said, Dad, if I make $20,000 in a month, will you back off? He goes, huh. <laughs> That's my dad's response. A few months later, come on Thanksgiving, I show my check for $20,000 in a month. He stopped. He started giving me a hard time. And now he's retired. And now he's doing, he's doing, uh, he's doing life here in, in Dallas, Texas. I relocated him from Chicago to Dallas. I've retired him. I'm doing responsible for financial bills. So got to get rid of the toxic conversation, the toxic boss, bosses. You, you have an opinion on that? A thousand percent. We're getting every single job that I had when it comes down to the field that I'm in right now where I have complete freedom to do as I please. If I want to wake up one day, Matthew, and say, you know what, I'm done, I could be done and not have someone breathing down my back or limiting me on, on what I can and cannot say. In previous employers, I, I was always extremely limited on what I could and could not do, couldn't state my opinion because it was their gym, their facilities, and that was just limiting the, you know, the potential that you know, just my knowledge, my expertise, my trade had on how I can actually serve my clients. So that actually limited the services that I was actually able to give to my clientele, which then again also was limiting the amount of money that I was actually bringing, uh, bringing into, my, uh, into my household. But then same thing similar to you, to you and your father. Uh, my father was a, uh, and here's the thing, man, this is one thing I don't understand. And I just, I, I never got to ask my father because in 2016 he passed away. But back in his country, in, in Ecuador, he was actually a professor at a big university and he was a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So this guy was set up pretty freaking well. And then he said, you know what, I'm going to take that and I'm bringing that to the United States and I'll make myself something out of that in the United States. He gets here in, in, the, in the late 80s. He ends up meeting my mom. They end up having me. Um, probably a mistake. Definitely a mistake. Yeah. I, don't think were, I don't think they were being intentional here, with that. Bro. I'm here, though. Um, and then my dad ended, ended up retiring from a Jewel Osco, which is, I think, only located in the Midwest. And, you know, a man who's so it's prepared. It's under Albertsons. Yeah, yeah Albertsons under Albertsons, Albertsons, exactly. So a man that was super prepared in his country did super, super well just to come to the United States to try to get a second chance to do something more, ended up retiring out of, out of Jewel Osco. So I think for him was more of a fear, like I don't want my son to end up in the same realm that I did and retire at a nine to five job, make a minimum wage. Yep. But in his, in his thought process, I'm helping my son, I'm, I'm lighting a fire under his ass so that way he can move and stop trying to come up with these business schemes and stop trying to join all these MLMs and stop trying to create mm -hmm. his own business and just get a set firm job Become a his, his dream for me was become a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, or stay, become a police officer and stay in there for at least 30 years. Something secure that's going to bring in a pension, a 401k, something that's going to make sure that I will not lose my job. Yep. But every single one of those in 2020 ended up going south. Be because, of the co because of COVID. Exactly. Because of the pandemic. Yeah. You know, so as much as we learn more about our relationships, husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, in our tough times, we also learn more about our careers and our businesses the in the tough times. times of the economy to see whether or not it's an essential business or non-essential business or whether that's something that was, uh, um, because figure, we're going to have another, you know, impact in our economy. 
Sure. There's going to be something that's going to set back our economy. There's going to be another recession. There's going to be <clears throat> a potential another pandemic. And you have to figure out whether or not my income source is still going to be continual during those tough times. Let's go back to this article. So toxic bosses, the next one is people that made a move because they dreaded their office culture, toxic office culture. Like you don't want to go to work because of the people there, the work that needs to be done there. There's no vision. There's no mission. There's no impact that you're making in your, in your, in your, your job. So an undermining culture of malicious gossip can make anyone feel a sense of anxiety going to the work day. Okay. By the way, notice this doesn't say competitive. There's a difference between malicious gossip versus a competitive environment. We have a competitive environment, but everybody's excited to compete because we compete in a way that's not, that doesn't uh, break you down. It actually builds you up. Next one. They aren't paid enough getting raises. So if you want to make moves to make you a millionaire, a value system that made 233 different millionaires millionaires because they realized they weren't paying enough and they weren't waiting around for somebody to make them more money. They couldn't afford the vacation they wanted or save up enough money to buy a house. So thanks to his investment in family and friends, he launched his own dealership and franchise, which allowed him to build significant wealth. They ventured off into the unknown. And last but not least, they had a draining commute. I hate traffic. To me, traffic is an example of somebody stealing my time. Somebody see my time. This guy is working in New York, New Jersey. If you know anything about New York, New Jersey, to say it's horrible is an understatement. LA traffic, horrible is an understatement. Chicago traffic, not as bad as New York and LA, but still horrible traffic. So if you're sick and tired of spending the majority of your day to work, back from work, being a bus driver for your kids and all the activities, it might be time for you to make a big decision to say, let me start a own business, at least on the side, so therefore I can transition out Make my side hustle my main business. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.